Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Cindy and um, welcome to worship with West Des Moines United Methodist Church. Today is kind of a special Sunday for us in that it's Music Sunday and we want to celebrate um, music and all that music does in our lives and what it means to us. Um, it is one of the ways I think that God speaks to us. So I want to take a moment and I want my cameraman to help you see what music means here at West Des Moines. We have a an enormous organ that provides so much good music for us. So I'm going to ask him to show you the pipes. You look up at those pipes and they are beautiful. They're made out of copper, part of them. They can produce sound that is just amazing. And it's been a blessing to us here at West Des Moines United Methodist Church to have this organ and to hear the music that it can share with us. Um, an organ is kind of a way that, uh, you know, the, those pipes fill with air and, and they're kind of reminiscent of the way that our lungs fill with air when it's time to sing. So I want to welcome you to this very special Sunday when we're going to celebrate music. And I hope that music in your life has filled you with hope and joy, that you have felt God's presence in it. And I hope you feel it today. Welcome to worship.
Today's scripture comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. God bless the reading, hearing, and living of Scripture. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kenton Jordan, the Director of Music here at West Moines United Methodist Church. Today is Music Sunday, and uh, we've been blessed to hear wonderful music to start our worship, and we'll hear some more uh, here in just a little while. Uh, so what we're missing, I guess, in the middle is a little bit of a sermon. So that's where Dan Hansey and I kind of take over today, uh, since our music is being led by so many of our wonderful, um, wonderful folks from our congregation. Uh, our topic today, obviously, is music and what music has meant to our faith journey and um, and just how much what that means to us as musicians and folks who have chosen to truly make music uh, a, a big apex point in our lives. Um, Dan Hansey has some wonderfully insightful comments he will make uh, here in just a little while. Um, I'm excited for all you to hear what he has to say, um, but I'm going to start us off. Um, so... You know, uh, not a lot. I haven't told this story to a lot of people, so I'll share it. But I'll share it with you guys. I think it's worth sharing. Um, when I was in high school, I uh, just like a lot of other folks and a lot of kids probably who go who go to church here and who are singers. Uh, I, I wanted to take voice lessons, so um, I did. I took my mom. Mom got me set up in voice lessons, and it was wonderful. I had so much fun. Um, this really cool guy, really cool teacher, um, a local teacher, um, middle school teacher in Des Moines, and I think I was a junior in high school. <clears throat> when I started with him and he was really fun. He was cool. And I was learning a lot from him, but right from the beginning, right from the first day from the first lesson, we both knew I had some problems. I had some things I had to work on. Uh, I brought my all state music and all that stuff. I was like, I want to make all state this year. Can you help me work on this? And, and that was our goal. Our goal was to work on all state music and to, um, and, and help that. And that would, that would help me build my skills, you know, just to learn those as learning pieces as I go through the year. Um, and so, but like I said, like first day, we, we both knew that I, I had some problems and, um, and some of those problems, the big problem for me was oddly enough, being that you all know I'm a singer, I had a hard time matching pitch as a 17 year old. I have, I had done music my whole life, my parents, musicians, everything. I had a hard time matching pitch. Uh, unless somebody was singing next to me or if I had music going with me or anything, I couldn't sing by myself at all. I, I had a hard time with it. I wouldn't keep in key. And again, if I'm going to make all state, I got to prove to, you know, the judges and folks who are selecting, selecting committee that I can sing on key. And so um, if I, you know, but at that point I, I couldn't, I had struggled with it. So me and my teacher worked really hard on this and worked, 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 worked. And I actually made all state that year. Uh, and actually, I'm rethinking about this. this. Was actually my senior year of high school, not my junior year. But nonetheless, I was, so I was a senior when this all when this all happened. So um, nonetheless, uh, I uh, I made all state that year, which was a wonderful goal. I had never done that before. I was very happy. It was really fun, uh, really great experience. But again, I still had work to do, um, and I had aspirations to go to college, to um, you know, to be a, a musician and to be a singer. I wanted to be a music teacher, and um, my my coach, my vocal coach, who always told me, he was like, yeah, you can do it. And he was very supportive and he was great. Um, so I went through the whole audition process at college and everything. And he helped me out with that, picking out, picking out recital rep. He was extremely supportive. Um, never said a bad word about anything. Um, and I got accepted to Drake and I got this really good, I got a scholarship and everything. Um, but, bef but before I got my scholarship, my coach called my mom 
And he told my mom, he's like, I'm very worried about Kenton going to school to be a musician. He can't match pitch. He can't do it. I've worked with him. He can't do it. And I've been working with this guy for a year. He has, he has did nothing but support me and uh, give me praise and like so lift me up. And he's going behind my back and saying these bad things, saying that I can't do it. And uh, my mom didn't want to break my heart by any means, and she didn't believe him anyways. Obviously, I had she. My teacher didn't know I had already been accepted into Drake. You know, like he didn't know that I had already. He what he had taught me had already surpassed, and I'm already going going on to the next level with, you know, with his help. And I give him credit. Um, but he wanted to to take that away. He wanted to. He wanted to say that I can't do it. He was worried. That was his word. He said, "I'm worried for your son to go to college to be a musician." My mom told me that as I was entering college and uh, that, really, that really hurt me like really deep. You know, it was like, I, I've known music for a long time and I knew I had problems, but here I am, I'm in college. And so, you know what I did is I made that, I turned that into fuel. I really did. I kind of ignited my, my fire, my passion for music and to know that I love music. I've always loved music and and it's always been a big part of my life, you know, my family and everybody in my life was always big musicians. I always sang in church and everything. So I knew I wanted to do music. And so the fact that this guy w went behind my back and, and, uh, and told my mom that he was worried and that I wasn't going to make it like that really like, kind of ignited something in me. It was like, no, man, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make this work. And so, um, here we go. Like I went through college and, and the best part about it is like, because I wanted to succeed, I looked for outlets uh, and places to to craft my to hone my skills. You know, as I'm learning in school, I wanted to practice outside of school, outside of my own practice time. So I got into First Christian Church. I started singing in church, um, and I kind of grew up in church singing and stuff. But we kind of my family kind of like a lot of families kind of hit or miss as I kind of grew up. And and once my mom and dad stopped going, they didn't make us go. Kind of a thing. And and so church was always consistent, but the. Um, but when I got to college, I was like, man, I, I think joining a church and singing a church choir is a really good idea. And luckily, there was a church that was actually hiring, and I was lucky enough to to be given the job. And I was a tenor section leader for there for six years. I sang in that choir for six years under uh, under that director, and and that was an awesome experience. And what that what that did was it not only helped hone, hone my musical skills in a church setting, um, it really like it. It brought me back down to earth in terms of like my faith. It brought me back to God. Like I really started realizing what I was missing almost by like not being in church and by not singing and not using my leadership skills with the music to like to help the church kind of you know meet you know, seek out Christ through through music. Um, I kind of I kind of found that again. Like I didn't really realize that I wanted to do that, <laughs> you know, until I was kind of immersed in it. And it was really, by the time I left, um, left my, my church, I was singing out in college, that director got me a church, got me a, a directing job at another church. And so I was kind of like, he kind of kicked me out. <laughs> you know, he was like, baby, he was like, almost like the baby, uh, the mama bird kicking the baby out of the nest. He was like, you've been here too long. I got you a job, <laughs> which I thank God for every day. Cause you know, that was my first music directing job. And if it wasn't for the lessons I had learned from my first church and brought them into my new church, and I mean, like, just lessons and lessons and lessons, and the thing that was always consistent was faith and music and knowing that I could I could always fall back on, on my music and my and how much I, I, I love to use music to teach people and to emote, um, and how I use that to, to help folks in the church setting grow within themselves as, as individuals um, and grow in their faith. Like that's, that's something I never really realized that I wanted to do. And that was important to me until I kind of got, you know, almost to college really. Um, because I always knew music was something that I love and music was something that I'm good at. And even to this day, uh, I'm relatively stubborn. I say, I have to do something with music in my career with a job. I, I need to get I need to get paid doing something with music with my degree, you know, because I've always told myself that's what I'm best at. I'm best at music. I'm best at teaching people and getting together with folks and, and making music together. That's what I'm best at. And so I'm just super stubborn about, I got my degree in this, so I'm going to use it, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and so, but 
it's also something I just I'm in love with. I I can't not uh, do do this at this point. That's but part of what made the pandemic extremely tough on me. I know it's been hard on on everybody on many 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 different levels. Um, you know, but from a for a pure like standpoint of a musician like I've sung professionally music runs in my core like it was hard like we can't music brings people together like a concert it's not a concert unless there's folks sitting in the seats you know like it brings people together like you know you love singing singers musicians love performing in front of people love giving sharing their gift um you know and and that that can be in front of a, a paying crowd or a church you know a lot of our, and obviously we're in a church setting, so our folks just love, love, love getting together and leading and singing for God. And um, not being able to do that for over a year has been so difficult. And that goes for not just singers, but for the, the bells. Like, they, they do their thing. And we have a wonderful bell program. Uh, Jen's got Jen's got a great thing going for us here for that. And those bell members, I mean, like, they, they really jive. Like, I mean, they're sure making a wonderful noise, and that's giving them their musical jones. And that's wonderful. Um, and so that goes for, goes for not just for singers. Like, any kind of musician has been struggling this year. And uh, that's part of part of what today is 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 me th- saying thank you for all those folks you know for for battling it with me <laughs> you know for not leaving me in the in the dark with this musician thing they're trying to trying to give me help lift me up and and give me as much assistance through this pandemic as we as I can and as they can and knowing that it's that it's a tough road that we've had to march. Um, and so that's part of what today is about too, is, is really lifting up those who have lifted me up and have helped, help keep our music program and our church nice and strong. Um, but back to the point, uh, music and music in my faith. I just, I've always wanted music in my life. I've always, and it took going to college and took being, being under a really good leader at my, uh, at my church. I was, I went to at college. Um, that director, he was a great, he was a great mentor he really kind of helped, you know, shift my thought process of what it means to be a singer to what it means to be a music director in a church. Um, and to really give your gift, be selfless, you know, with your gift, um, and, and, and be, and be willing to share it with others and how to do that. And he really kind of helped open up that door for me just a little bit, uh, and figuring that out. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm still learning a lot to learn about that. <laughs> By no means do I know everything, but it's 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 awesome, and it's really give it really lifts lifts my spirit uh, to be able to do music in a church and help folks, um, you know, lead lead their help lead their musical lives to become closer to God, and that goes for everybody in the choir as well as folks sitting in the pews. Uh, you know, some of those folks who say they can't sing, they still have a favorite hymn. You know they still want. They still need somebody to help them sing through their hymns and uh, and other things. And they love it and they appreciate hearing everything that we present to them too. There's lots of different ways that music helps lift everybody. But regardless, um, I that's kind of my a little bit more a little my backstory, a little bit more about music and why, and uh, you know how how it's kind of helped guide my faith a little bit and and how the two have merged over the over the course of my <laughs> relatively short life. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, Dan Hansey is going to be, uh, having some comments as well. And I'm extremely excited for you all to hear what he has to say. I was, I was blown away listening to him when I was, when we were recording his, uh, his part of the ser- uh, sermon. So he's coming up next. So, um, thank you all for listening and I'll see you in a little bit. Well, this is Dan, um, Dan Hansey. I've been playing here since 2013, probably you recognize, or at least you recognize one side of my face. Um, and uh, so they asked me to speak a little bit about music and maybe what it means a little bit to me. Um, <clears throat> I grew up, I think probably the, you know, the, what I remember most of my childhood even is, I grew up in a church that was very, very musical with a family that was very, very musical and uh, worship has always been a huge part of my life. I think from, from day one, it, it may be because in my childhood we didn't have, 
a TV or anything else in our house, but we had a piano, and we, you know, most of our life spent, was spent either, you know, listening to music or in some form of, you know, we spent a lot of time at church, but my parents were very, very involved. And uh, I think, you know, pr we're probably all born to be worshipers. And uh, sometimes we stray off that path. <clears throat> but I think, you know, we, uh, we worship something no matter what, what we, you know, however we look at life, we're worshiping something. And I was fortunate to grow up in a home where Christ was a center. And we spent, you know, a lot of time, you know, worshiping. And I, um, I, don't, I don't know that I've always stayed on that path perfectly, but I've, um, I've enjoyed, you know, a lot of years, you know, using music as my, one of the ways that I worship. And I, uh, one of the, Probably one of my favorite things I do even now is um, when I'm at my home and my wife and I spend time together, we'll spend time worshiping, just singing and praising together. And uh, it's just always been a big expression in our world and in my life of um, praise to Him. And so I've always enjoyed music probably because of that a little bit because it's one of my expressions of, of how I worship. And I know everybody has their own different way that they maybe pray or, um, you know, express their love and appreciation to God. And sometimes that's been um, one of the ways that I know that I personally do. And so I hope that sometimes when I'm playing or when I'm, you know, providing the music, um, helping with with the worship at the church here. That that I'm actually enabling that a little bit for you too. So I think, you know, along the path, and I've I have I've been blessed partially because not only do I get to do it here, but I get to do it other places, and I've actually been able to uh, kind of make a career out of music. And I don't even know that I initially intended to do this when I was younger. I thought I had other visions for my life, but, um, you know, God has actually let me do the thing that I probably enjoy most as actually a career. And, uh, and uh, these guys here have actually say, probably I've been at it a while because uh, I started doing what I do now <clears throat> we'll just go with a long time ago, and uh, and I've enjoyed it so much that I've just stayed at it for a long, long time. So I I enjoy playing and I enjoy uh, worshiping, and it's you know for me it's never been really a lot of work because it's like I said it's something that I have always just enjoyed, and and uh, so I hope that hope that you know when I'm worshiping that it can bring praise.
I want to invite you into prayer at this time. And, and as we do, I want to think about what's all what's been shared here today and, and our scripture. In that scripture, it said, this is verse 16 from Colossians chapter 3. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Are you a singer? And you may not regard yourself as a talented singer, you know, that you're good at it. But I think all of us have kind of a song in us, you know, something that we want to sing. Maybe you're that person who sings in the shower, or maybe you're somebody who sings when you're riding in the car and you sing along. Um, I don't regard myself as a singer, but there are times, I tell you, when, you know, I sort of just want to fill up my lungs and, and just sing, sometimes for joy, um, that something is so good and so wonderful. Um, a couple Sundays ago in church, we were singing a song together and, and um, just hearing those words um, and being together um, just filled me with joy. And I, I just wanted to belt out a song. Sometimes there are songs, I think, that um, take us down into the depths of our emotions. I always think that we sing what we can't often express in words. And so um, kind of music is beyond the logic of our words, and, and so we sing. But sometimes there are songs that you want to sing almost as a dirge. We have one song in our hymnal that says, um, I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. But it also says, I'm going to moan when the Spirit says moan. And sometimes I think moaning, you know, is, is an expression as well. However we sort of connect, our souls and spirits connect with God. I've told some of you in the past that when I wake up in the morning, when I am healthy and strong, when my spirit is in the right place, when I wake up in the morning, there is a song. If I pause and wait for a moment, there will be a song that enters my heart, enters my soul, enters my mind. Um, and it may, be, um, it may be the Dixie Chicks, you know, it, it may be Taylor Swift, it may be a hymn, um, some sort of melody that sort of, in a way, to me says, God is with me this day. You know, the thing about music, we hear it in our ears, but, um, but music and melody, it floats around outside us, kind of like the Holy Spirit floating around, and it draws us out of um, what we might be thinking or feeling. Um, it kind of opens up the story, and, and in some ways, maybe it says, have you listened to God today? Have you listened um, to your spirit and your soul? Have you listened to the way God might be singing in you? Which brings us to one more thing about song. Um, what song are you singing? When you listen to your voice, when you listen to your life, what kind of music is coming out of you? Um, and we can find ourselves, I think, in times when the music that's coming out of us honestly sounds more like whining than it does like joy. Sometimes the music that's coming out of us is marching music, sort of saying, God, tell me which way to go or what to do. Sometimes the music that comes out of us is like a symphony, and our music blends in with the music of other people, and it's an amazing thing. And you've probably had those moments, maybe when, when you're with family or you're with friends, you're with a group of people, and it feels so right, and the presence together of everyone is sort of a symphony that comes together. Um, this music. So what if it is our soul speaking to God and God speaking to us? May it be so. May it be so. So will you join me in a time of prayer? Holy God, the music, the music, to listen, to listen to nature, to listen, you know, Lord, it's probably not by accident that birds wake up in the morning and sing. Um, that every animal seems to have some way of expressing themselves in sound. Um, it's not by accident, Lord, that, that we sing when we're happy or we sing when we're sad, we, that there is a song in us. I think, Lord, it's beyond um, what we can speak. And so we sing, so we have music to express who we are. This day, Lord, this day, let our song be yours in everything that we're singing, everything that we're celebrating. Let our song blend in with the song of Christ. Let that be a song of compassion and justice and hope. Let us sing that song. Lift our spirits, Lord. Help us to see 
um, see you, see all that you have planned, see the world that's around us, and know that you are in it and that you are singing and dancing with us. We get bogged down, and we pray, Lord, that you might draw us up into the melody that is you. Bless our time together, Lord, and bless the week ahead. Give us a song to carry us in, carry us into the time before us, to meet the challenges of the day. Lord, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who came as your word, as your melody, as your presence with us. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice one thing before we leave this moment. Behind me, again, are those big pipes that are part of our um, organ. And those big copper pipes, they look like praying hands if you use your imagination. You can think about those being hands lifted up. And from those pipes come amazing music. May our hands, may our hands be instruments of music in the world as well. Have a great week, everybody. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespassers, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Marnie Stein and I wanted to talk to you about donating hygiene supplies for Bidwell Riverside. Food insecurity in Iowa has doubled since the start of the pandemic and in 2020 the Bidwell Riverside Food and Clothing Pantry on the south side of Des Moines has served under just 17,000 individuals. When you don't have enough money for food, buying hygiene supplies is usually not a high priority. So we're collecting hygiene supplies from May 9th until May 16th to help these families out. We would like to ask you to donate the following items. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, shampoo, soap, shaving cream, razors, deodorant, diapers in large sizes, which would be sizes four to six, baby wipes, toilet paper, dish soap, laundry detergent, and feminine hygiene products. 
if you donate um, these supplies, we would prefer that you donate the full size of shampoo and toothpaste and not travel sizes. However, we will take travel sizes as well, but we prefer the big sizes. There's three ways you can drop off your donations. You can bring them to in-person church and leave them in the Narthex on May 9th or May 16th. You can bring them to the All Church Picnic on May 12th, or you can leave them between the south entry doors during the week and missions team members will help move those into the building. We'll also accept cash or check donations and then we'll take the money and buy supplies in bulk. If you'd like to do that, please make your check out to the church, but write Bidwell Riverside in the memo line. Thank you for your support. Hey, West Des Moines and I Methodist Church. It is Kenton Jordan, your music director, and this is my chance to give a huge, huge shout out to all of our musicians this year. This is my chance to tell you all, thank you. You have done nothing but step up in the hardest year of most of our lives through this pandemic, bringing music to our church and helping us spread the word of God to everybody who is watching our online and now our in-person streaming stuff. Um, <clears throat> I can't be more uh, happy and blessed that um, that I've had so many of you say yes and have you taken the challenge of recording yourselves or um, taking the uh, the risk of coming in and having us record you and work on music. Um, being a musician myself, I totally understand that it's it's hard to not have music and be with people when you're practicing and when you're rehearsing and when you're doing stuff. So I totally know that this year has been really hard on us musicians. And I can't tell you enough, like I couldn't do this job without you guys. And so um, I'm so happy, so blessed that all of you were able to uh, help me out this year and send me your videos and share your talents with all of us at our, at our church. Um, I just want you to know how appreciated you are. And I'm going to be coming for you some more as we keep turning the corner, um, coming, hopefully starting to come out of this pandemic. Uh, so don't go away. I'm going to be uh, asking you for some more music and um, hopefully you'll just keep saying yes. So uh, last word here, just thank you again. Like I guess I can't thank you all enough. Thanks so much for all of your work and all of your, um, all of your gifts. So as we prepare to leave here today, I just want to take a moment and thank our musicians. Dan Hansey is our organist and he does an amazingly fantastic job. And he sits down and there is music in his soul and that music comes out his hands and into this keyboard. And it's amazing to hear him play. And I'm so grateful for Dan. And I see he's got sticky notes here for the songs that he's been playing recently. Um, when I survey the wonderful cross, old rugged cross, um, amazing Grace, Sanctuary, and uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth. He plays those things, and I think we feel peace on earth when Dan's playing, so very grateful to him. Kenton Jordan is uh, our director of music, and you often hear his voice, and I want to thank him for all the work that he does in organizing us and, and bringing us music. And then Jen Hawkins, Jennifer Hawkins, is our director of Bells. And you know, the way that you can take you know, a dozen or more people, bring them all together playing um, dozens of bells and bring that into something that is just beautiful, um, that connects. I mean, I, I think that is, uh, that's amazing. And so very grateful for all of them and all the work they do in bringing us music. And to so many of you who have been in the bell choir or in our choirs or um, uh, singing solos, just grateful for you for all that you've done. Um, well, I think when you make music, you just, you, you speak the language of God. So thank you so much for all that you do in that. Um, as we leave this week, leave this place, I pray that music fills your soul. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and always and give you life. Amen.